All right, so we're going to do 3.2 notes, part one today, and you're going to start your worksheet 3.2. It's going to be due Tuesday and Wednesday next week, and then we'll have quiz 3.2 Wednesday and Thursday next week. But on uh, probably Wednesday, Tuesday or Wednesday, we're going to go to a new section, maybe Wednesday, I'm not sure yet, to do 3.3. Three, three. All right, so... Something you need to know explicitly written means we got Y solve for, Y solve for something. And this is what we've been doing before. This whole section is about implicit differentiation. And that's when you have X and Y's both, both X and Y's in your equation. You don't have Y solve for. Now, something I have not told you so far is when we do the derivative of um, X cubed to DX, we take the power rule and move it to the front. We lower the power by one. There is actually a dx dx after that. But this always reduces to 1, so the answer is just 3x squared. Well, when you do a derivative that has y in it, we use the same rules, but the difference is we get 3y squared, take the power times it, the number and coefficient in front, lower the power by 1, but now we have dy dx after it. And you have to write your dy dx because like Unlike dx over dx, which reduces to 1, which doesn't change anything, this does change the value. So this dy dx is going to be the derivative of y with respect to x, and we're going to use this later. So when I come over here and do this problem, we're going to get 1 plus, because the derivative of x is 1, and it's dx dx, but that reduces, and then this would be 1 dy dx when you do the derivative of the y. So this would be the answer for this part. Coming over here is a product rule. So when we do, we do first times derivative of the second. And again, we're doing the derivative of y with respect to x, so we must stick a dy dx there. So whenever you do the derivative of a variable that is not the x, you must put the d whatever variable over dx. So there's first is x, derivative of the second is the 2y dy dx plus the second term is y squared times the derivative of x is x. So we would probably rewrite this by putting the 2 in front of 2xy, and we'll go ahead and leave the dy dx right here. And over here, we're just going to have y squared. So those are implicit. The first one's not, but the next three are implicit differentiation. That's explicit. Now we're going to solve for dy dx. So we're going to do this implicit differentiation, and we're going to do these three steps. And we're going to go through and do this problem with it. So our whole goal here is because we got it equal to a number, we're going to be able to solve for dy dx. So we're going to do implicit differentiation. So we're going to do the first one, the derivative of this y with respect to x is 3y squared dy dx. And then we got plus the derivative of y squared is going to be 2y dy dx. The derivative of minus 5y is going to be minus 5 dy dx. And then the derivative of x squared is going to be negative 2x. And that is going, and that's dx dx, but that reduces, and then the derivative of 4 is 0. Now our whole goal here is to solve for dy dx. So everything that's got a dy dx in it, we're going to factor out the common factor of dy dx. So that will leave us 3y squared plus 2y minus 5. And then we're going to add everything that doesn't have a dy dx or subtract it over to the other side. So I've got to add that 2x over to the other side. And then last but not least, to get dy dx by itself, you're going to divide each side by this parenthesis thing. So that's going to leave us at 2x in the numerator divided by 3y squared plus 2y minus 5. And this is my dy dx right here. So again, the implicit differentiation is we're taking other variables and doing derivative of those with respect to x. So we got this object here. And... It says graph this thing. Well, I don't know if you remember this or not, but this is an ellipse. So to get a standard form of an ellipse is we divide everything by four. 
because you got to get an ellipse equal to one. So because it's X minus H, and I guess I'll write that over here. Here's the uh, form that we have. This is the form of an ellipse, the standard form. And whichever A is the bigger number, so A squared is four. So the center is the HK. Well, there's nothing with those, so that means the center of this is zero, zero. And your A squared is four in this case, which means A is two, and since it's under the axis, we would go right to and put a dot, and we would go left to and put a dot. And then B squared is one and the square root of one is one. So you go up one and put a dot and down one and put a dot. And that gives us this ellipse like this. I don't know if you remember this from pre-calc, I hope you do. And we're gonna come down here and find the derivative of this equation. So we would do the two X, the derivative of X squared is two X plus we take two times four is eight Y. So we're doing that with respect to x, so we must put the dy dx on with that, and the derivative over here is zero. And now we've got to solve this for dy dx, so we would subtract and do that up here. So we would get 8y dy dx, and we would subtract the 2x over, and then we would divide by 8y. And this would end up being the dy dx is equal to... And I'd probably reduce that to this. So that right there is my derivative. So this is the slope. This is the slope at any point on this ellipse. Now this says find the slope of the tangent line to the curve at this point. Well, that's x and that's y. So all I'm going to do is plug those in here and here. So we would say dy dx. And what we say here is we put a little deal there. And we tell them that we're doing it at the point the square root of 2. We do a little line there and it's negative one over square root of two. So we're just telling them we're plugging this in. So it's going to be negative radical two over four times negative one over radical two. So this is going to be negative radical two over negative four over radical two. So these become positives. And you flip the bottom fraction over, leave the top fraction and you flip and multiply by the reciprocal. So this is going to be two fourths, which is one half. Now you can actually stop here, but we're going to go all the way to half because, and you should practice doing this because this will be a uh, multiple choice question if they do this. Now this says write the equation of the tangent line. Now you notice this is exactly the same as this, and that's the slope. So this is your slope. This is your point. So all we do is plug it in. So we get y minus negative 1 over radical 2 equals the slope, which we just found to be a half, and x minus radical 2. So right there is our tangent line. And then it says write the equation of above explicitly and use your calculator to verify this. So what that means is we're supposed to come up here and we're supposed to solve this thing. We're supposed to solve this thing for y. So we would subtract the x squared from both sides. So we would get 4y squared equals 4 um, minus x squared. And then we would divide that by 4 and we get y squared equals 4 minus x squared all over 4. And then we get y equals, and your y sub 1 would be the positive value of this. And I'm going to go ahead and take the square root of 4, which puts a 2 there. You can, you can make that a half if you wish. And then there's also the negative of this. And you have to put this in for y sub 2. So y sub 2 would be this. So if you graph, if you graph this thing, you graph both these parts, that's going to give you that same picture of that ellipse up there. And then you want to subtract this 1 over radical 2 out here somewhere. And then put y sub 3 equals this. And you should be able to see that on this ellipse, that this graph is going to, the line, this line here will intersect that graph and be a tangent to that graph. And if you check the intersection of that line and the, and the other function wherever it hits, you should get out this ordered pair, but it'll be in decimal form on your calculator. So if I were you, I'd give that a shot. And this is the last problem we're doing on this first part. So it says find the slope of that graph 
and it's a 0.31. So we want to find this. First, we're going to have to do the derivative of this thing up here. So we're going to use chain rule over here because three is the coefficient, and we're going to start out here with this outside power. So I'm going to take two times three and get six. I'm going to leave the inside identical. And then I'm going to lower that power of two by one. So that's a one right there. And then I got to go in and do the derivative times the derivative of the inside part. Some of you on the test were leaving your parentheses off. So the derivative of x squared is 2x dx dx. And then this would be plus 2y dy dx because I'm doing the derivative of y with respect to x. Okay, so that would be the end of that chain rule. And then we got equals, and this is product rule. So I guess I'm going to let 100x be my first term. You could let 100 be the coefficient. So the first term is 100x. The derivative of the second term is dy dx. It's 1, but you got to put dy dx. Plus the second term is y times the derivative of 100x is 100. And there's my equation. Now, dy dx is my slope. Now, I don't want to go through doing a bunch of algebra on this, and they gave me the point. So all I'm going to do is plug in my ordered pairs and for my x and y's and then solve. So I'm dealing with numbers instead of variables. So I'm going to plug 3 in for x, 1 in for y. So that's what I'm doing right here. And dy dx again is what I am solving for. And then I'm going to simplify all this stuff. So let's say this is 6, this is 9 plus 1 is 10. Over here, I got 6 plus 2 dy dx. And over here, I'm going to have 300 dy dx. And I'm going to be plus 100. So like always, I'm going to simplify over here, and this is going to be 60. So I'm going to take 60 times 6, which is 360, and 60 times 2, which is 120 dy dx. Now over here, I still have my 300 dy dx plus my 100. So I want to have a positive. So I'm going to subtract this 120 over here, which gives me 180. 180 dy dx. I'm going to subtract that 100 over to that 360, which gives me 260. So my dy dx, and I'm going to tell you that I did it at the point 0.31 is equal to 260 over 180. Now you can leave it like that or you can reduce so these zeros cancel off and two goes into both those so that'd be 13 nice. So there is the slope. That is the slope of this function at the point 31. So that's the end of the first part and we'll do the second part in a little while.